Hey guys, uh, welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use an Xbox controller with your VR headset. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is launch Stingray. All right, so let's go ahead and launch Stingray and get started. So once launch Stingray starts, what we're going to want to do is use one of the templates. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab the template and I'm going to use the HTC Vive. But again, if you are using the, the Oculus, you're going to want to grab the Oculus because it won't have the right flow notes. Okay, so I'm going to grab the HTC Vive because that's the setup that I have and I'm going to go create and I'm just going to go ahead and put this on my desktop. So I'm going to call this uh, HTC Vive uh, using Xbox controls. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab my uh, directory and I'm going to put it on my desktop because I don't want to keep this necessarily. So I'm going to go new folder. And I'm going to call this uh, HTC uh, with Xbox. Okay. And I'm going to select that folder and I'm going to go create. And that'll go ahead and create my project and launch me into the project. Okay. So by default, it goes ahead and launches the, uh, the standard level. Um, we don't want to necessarily use that, so let's go ahead and do some basics just to get rid of that stuff so we're not launching directly into it because we're going to want to do this in our own little project here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into our script folder and into our Lua and go into our project and let's rename the, uh, the, the primary um, level instead of loading uh, VR learning. We're going to go ahead and call this HTC underscore Vive Xbox. Okay, and I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to hit save. Okay, so now I've got it looking for the correct uh, default level and I just have to create that level now. So I'm going to go file new level and I'm going to go file save level as and I'm just going to name it the same as what I just uh, called it. Actually, I made a mistake in the spelling, so I'm going to change that to Vive instead of Viv, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Okay, and I'm just going to make that correction here as well, so that this is looking in the correct directory uh, also, and I'm going to hit save. Okay, so that part's done. Um, now we just want to have it default to this. Okay, so we're just going to go File, Project Settings, um, Project Settings, and I have this kind of squished, so I'm just going to fix that really quick. And right here, it's saying that it wants to load uh, the default template of basic um, and the uh, default startup level here is VR learning. So what I want to do is I want to change that to, and we'll just grab it from here. So we want uh, HTC Vive Xbox, okay? And that'll change it to the correct uh, location. All right, so now that that part's done, we're pretty much ready to go. Now, um, to begin, what we're gonna wanna do is just kinda understand what we're doing here. So the idea is that we're gonna be able to move the HTC Vive uh, position based off of an Xbox controller's input. So we can kinda move forward and move backwards and uh, kinda control it in that regard. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is uh, just put some stuff in our level so that we can test um, and see that we're actually moving around. So let's go into the asset browser again. Let's go to content, models, and we're just going to grab some of the stuff from the uh, existing scene that happens to already be here. But you can use any models you want or any level pieces that you want if you have stuff imported already. All right, so I'm just going to go props and I'm going to grab uh, the floor. I think there's a floor asset in here somewhere. Uh, room and all right, VR template room. And let's just go ahead and place that in our scene. So now we have something to walk around with it. Okay, so there we have it, and there we have a basic room that we can use, and uh, we can kind of see if we move with the controller if it's actually functioning, all right? So we're just going to go ahead and save that level, and I'm just going to turn off the grid because it kind of uh, is disturbing, all right? So there we have it. So um, everything is now pretty much set for us to begin our, our tests, okay? So in level flow, uh, what we want to do is start you know, building out the functionality, okay? So the first thing we're gonna need is an Xbox input, okay? So we're gonna go right click, and we're gonna go input, and we're gonna go Xbox 
uh, thumbstick. Okay, so let's grab our Xbox thumbstick. And now we want to tell it which thumbstick we're gonna use. For this case, we're gonna use the left thumbstick. Okay, so just click on that button and select the left side, all right? And now all we have to do is just choose the axis, okay? So here's our axis, and we want to break these axis values into components, okay? Because we don't really need um, you know, the X, Y, and Z as this is a vector. We only need the X and the Y, and we want to use those individually, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go math, math vector and we're gonna go um, vector components okay and that'll allow us to break apart these components into two separate you know now we can just get the X value from the uh, from the output okay so we're gonna go axis and now we've got our X chain coming off of here now we know that we want to move forward and backwards and we also want to move left and right okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another one of those um, so we could just find it again, but it's easier to just copy and paste it. So control C, control V, and let's go here. So on this top one, we're going to be working with the X value. And on the bottom one, we're going to be working with the Y value. Okay, so this is going to be our strafe function. And this is going to be our move forward and backwards uh, function. All right. So now what we want to do is um, simply reverse these values because they're going to be backwards. And I only know that because I've done it before. If you hadn't, you would have realized that moving forward is going to move you backwards, moving backwards is going to move you forward, um, and it's going to be a little wonky. So we want to reverse those values. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go math, and we're going to go numeric, and we're going to multiply. Okay, so we're going to multiply that value and we're gonna multiply it by a negative one, okay? And that will do the job of reversing the values, okay? So, and you know, if it's negative one times negative one, it's gonna be one. If it's one times negative one, it's gonna be negative one, okay? So that, that effectively reverses our value, okay? And we're gonna to wanna to do that on both sides of the equation, okay? So we're gonna do that on the bottom as well. So from here, we're gonna go Y, and we're gonna reverse that value also, all right? So now we've got our values reversed, so now what we want to do is basically ensure our range, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to normalize these values, okay? So let's go ahead and we're going to go... Um, now this part is probably not necessary, but it's, it's really nice to do because it just ensures that our values are always going to be from 0 to 1. We're not going to get any weird values of like 100 or 10,000 or anything like that that could possibly come from our control stick. Um, so this is just a normalization, and it's really just there to ensure that our values are, are within nominal range, okay? So, so let's just go ahead and go math, numeric, and we want normalize, okay? So normalize to range, okay? And our range is going to be from 0, and our max is going to be 1, okay? So that says whatever the inputs are, we want to normalize them from 0 to 1. We don't want them to go above or below 1. Um, above or below, uh, above one or below zero. So it'll always keep it within that range. And again, we're going to want to do that on both sides. We're going to want to do that on the X and on the Y. So let's go ahead and connect that. So now we've got normalized to range that is working um, on both sides. And all of our values are going to be between the values of zero and one. Okay. So the next thing we're going to want to do is introduce our movement speed. Okay, so we haven't even created that variable yet, but we're going to want a variable here that is going to allow us to have a move speed multiplier so that we can adjust the speed that, so this is giving us a range from 0 to 1, but what if we want to move faster or slower than what this range will allow? So we need to have a multiplier that's going to be used to increase or decrease that value. In our case, we're probably going to be decreasing that value. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a variable. So we're going to go numeric and set numeric variable. And that numeric variable is going to um, be set uh, right here. So we're going to go uh, uh, event on level loaded. And we're just going to set this variable as soon as the level loads so that we always have a way to easily control this variable. All right? And we're going to set it to something like 0 0.001. Okay? And we're going to name it move speed. Okay, so now we have a move speed variable that we can use. 
Um, and we're going to want to get that variable here. So we're going to go variable and we're going to go get numeric variable. Okay, so here's our get numeric variable. And we're just going to name this the same as what this is up here. So it's going to be move speed again. And now we have a move speed uh, being, you know, able to be grabbed from here now. Okay, so whatever this variable is, is what we can grab from here. And what's nice about this is later on, if we want to change this dynamically, like when you have running capability, let's say, um, we can adjust this numeric variable if we want to make it, uh, you know, increase speed during gameplay, right? So that's why we want to use a variable here and not just, in, you know, put a data, um, you know, we could go math uh, data. Uh, I'm sorry, it's under data and numeric data, right? We could just pipe this in, but then we have no way of adjusting it over time. We want to be able to adjust this, you know, possibly in our game. So I'm leaving it like this so that we have that ability to be able to control that, um, you know, in, in game. So like if you hit the X button, we can multiply that times two and now whatever your speed is, is now double as fast, right? So um, it'll be really beneficial to have it as a variable. Okay, but nonetheless, let's just keep moving. So we have our move speed, but now we have to actually, you know, apply it to this normalized range. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go math, uh, numeric, and we're going to go multiply. Okay, and now we can take, um, you know, this move speed and up multiply it by our, uh, our move speed. Okay, so there we have our move speed, and we're going to go math, numeric, multiply, could have just copied it. I should have just copied it. Um, and I'm just going to pipe it in here. And because multiplication doesn't matter, I'm just going to keep this nice and clean by having you know the, this go to the A and this go to the B. It doesn't really make a difference since it's a multiplication. It'll always work um, no matter which you know A or B I plug into. So uh, so yeah, on top it's A to B, and on uh, bottom it's B to A, right? But again, the output is going to be the same, so it doesn't really. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is actually get the current position of our VR headset. Okay, so here is where it's going to vary a little bit if you have an Oculus. Um, in the Steam, I would go into the Steam VR and I want to do uh, get uh, tracking space. Okay, so get tracking space. Okay, so this is going to give us the ability to get the position of our tracking space. Okay, so um, in the Oculus, it would be the same exact node, it would just be under the Oculus dropdown. So here we have Steam VR. you'd have to find the Oculus VR version and find that same thing, get tracking space, okay? Um, but once you have that, it's gonna be the same, okay? And it's gonna give you the same kind of outputs, right? So no big deal. Um, now what we wanna do is take this position and add it to the, um, the different positions that we have, right? So here we're, we're you know, moving the X value and here we're moving the Y value. So what we want to do is again break out these components so that we can you know work with them again. So we're going to go math, numeric, I'm sorry, uh, vector, and we're going to go vector components once again. Okay. So here we're going to take the position and plug it into the vector and we're going to take the X value and add it to the X value of the uh, controller. Okay. So we're going to go math, uh, numeric and we're going to go addition okay so now we're going to be adding whatever this value is to you know this position on its x value okay so that's what we're doing here okay and the same thing is going to be true on the y so we're going to want to go math numeric addition oops not ceiling uh, math numeric addition and we're just gonna again this is um, you know I can go either direction so I'm just gonna keep it nice and clean in my graph okay so here's our addition and we're gonna be adding so let's just take a quick look at what we've got going on so far just to, to recap a little bit okay so we've got our Xbox controller which is gonna be giving a value out okay when I push the stick up it's gonna give me a certain value when I push the stick down it's gonna give me a, um, a you know a negative of that X value Right, so up and down is our x, um, I'm sorry, is our y value. So up and down is going to be over here. In fact, we can even uh, denote that. So let's go ahead and group this, do this. Here we go, group. And we're going to call this input, right? And 
Now we're going to go uh, right click group and we're going to say strafe component. Okay, so that's the strafe component. So this is going to allow us to slide left and slide right, which is called strafing. Okay, um, on this one, we're going to name it group and we're going to call this move component or uh, let's say forward forward uh, component. Okay, so now we've got our forward component. And obviously forward could also be backwards. If it's you know, down, it's gonna to go to the negative value, right? So no big deal. So here we're just gonna be reversing the controls. So group, and we're gonna go reverse input. Okay, oops, I spelled that wrong. Reverse, reverse input, and put it right there. And group, and reverse reverse input okay so again this is going to be doing the job of taking the you know on this one let's say down is going to be reversed to up and up is going to be reversed to down okay on this one left is going to be right and right is going to be left now here we're just going to be normalizing the range I probably don't even need to group this but I will so um, we're going to call this uh, ensure values are in range okay oh and i didn't actually type anything so ensure values are in range okay so there we go and i'm just gonna actually make this easy on myself i'm just gonna copy that input and i'm gonna make this box a little bigger so i can see what's going on so copy okay place group, paste, okay, and now we've got our values being in range, All right? Now I'm just going to do a little more cleanup here. I'm just going to move this stuff more over to the right and make sure that I can read what I've written uh, there, okay? So now I can see that my values are being put into range there, all right? So now we're going to take this movement speed, so we're going to go group, uh, get the movement speed, And we're just gonna open that up a touch so that we can read it. And we're gonna multiply that movement speed. So group, multiply, move speed with normalized values. Okay, so there we go. And we wanna make sure that that is also opened up so we can see what's happening there. And we're going to copy it so I don't have to write it twice. And group and paste. Okay, so there we go. So there's the movement speed being normalized and being multiplied against our uh, variable input speed. Okay, so now here what we're doing is we're getting the tracking space, so uh, get the current position. Of the headset. Okay, so here we're getting the movement, you know, the actual position of our current headset. Oops, I want to grab that. I just want to open it up so I can see. And now I'm going to drag this out a little more. And here we're going to break it into components again. I'm not going to denote that though, because that's pretty obvious. Um, and we're going to say add normalized and multiplied values to the current position of the headset. Okay, so there we have that. And I'm sorry if I'm being a little over the top here. I just want to make sure everyone understands what's going on. Okay, so 
one more time, let's recap here. Okay, so we're taking the input, we're breaking the components down so that we have a strafe component and a forward component. Then we're going to reverse that input so that it's going the correct direction. Then we're going to normalize those ranges, okay, so that we have it between 0 and 1. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the movement speed and we're going to multiply that movement speed times whatever this input value is. Okay, so if this is 0.5, this is going to now be multiplied by 0 0.001 to give us our new value that we want to add to our current position of our tracking space. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. Nothing really super complicated here, even though it seems a bit complicated. It's actually pretty straightforward. We're just basically taking a position adding a value to that position. All this stuff over here is just to take the input of the controller and make it something we can utilize. All right, so that's really all we're doing. We're taking the position and adding it to some value, okay? That's it, okay? Um, and now what we wanna do is we wanna recombine this information uh, back into a vector that we can utilize, okay? So we're gonna go math, vector, and we want to go vector from components this time. Okay, so we're going to take these variables that we've now made and we're going to put them back into something we can utilize for our new position in our tracking space. Okay, so we're just taking the x value that we've changed and the y value that we've changed and we're merging them back together to give us a, a new value that we're going to be putting into our, um, our heads, uh, head tracking space. Okay, so we're going to go now steam vr and we're going to go set tracking space so we want to go set tracking space okay so this one gets the tracking space this one uh i'm sorry yeah this gets the tracking space and this is going to set the tracking space okay so this is going to effectively move us that's what this is going to do right here okay so we're going to take that vector and we're going to plug that into our new position and we're going to set our scale to one 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 oops it's not taking it automatically, one space, one space, one. So that just ensures that our tracking space is still at one, one, one. Now, the only thing we have to do now is update this every frame, okay? So we want this to happen so that when I move this stick, that it's always updating, right? So if I push up a little bit, I'm gonna be moving forward at that up speed, okay? Now to do that, we need to check this information every frame so that every frame we're adding this new value to our current tracking space, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and go event, and we're gonna go level update, okay? So level update and plug that into here, and that is literally it, okay? So that's gonna do everything we need it to do. Um, so we should be pretty much ready to rock and test this, okay? So um, let's give it a go. So let's go file, save level, and um, let's try it out and see how it works. Okay. So now that all systems are go, I want you to note that I do not have the hand controllers connected. And that is on purpose so that we can make sure that um, we're only taking input from the uh, Xbox controller. Okay, so level viewport. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a test play. And here we are in VR. And by using the up stick, I am now moving, but I'm moving extremely slowly. Okay, so that's obviously going to be too slow. We're going to want to correct that, but it does seem to be working correctly. It's just moving really slow. So let's go back into our level flow and let's change this to 0.01 instead and see how that works. So file, save level, level viewport, hit play, wait for it to launch, and that's much nicer, okay? And I've now got very easy to use movement. And I can still look around with my headset, but I always move, uh, you know, relative to the floor. All right, so that should be pretty much everything you need to get started. 
Okay, so that should get you basically going. Um, you can obviously expand upon this. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do depending on what you want actually to come out of your uh, results. Um, you may want to you know, rotate your um, input when you're going ahead and looking to the right or looking to the left so that forward is always forward, but I'm not going to cover all that right now. Um, maybe I'll do it in a follow-up tutorial, but this is just to get you basically going with uh, simple movement controls. I'm figuring if you're using the Xbox controller, you're mostly going to be using a seated game, so therefore you're not really going to want to have it like move to the right when you look to the right or whatever. Um, it, I, would, I would assume that you just want it to strafe and move forward and back. Uh, again, that's going to be very dependent on your specific application, but you can take this and run with it and, you know, perform in different math functions to make this, uh, you know, kind of work the way you need it to. Um, hopefully this has been helpful, um, and thank you very much for watching.